we just got a question posted on our Discord server. Someone can translate this code into visual scripting. Now we do have a Discord server and if you have any questions or if you want to be part of the community, helping other people out with visual scripting, join the server if you haven't already. Asking questions on the Discord is a little bit easier because you can actually post some screenshots and give more information than you can on YouTube. So in this video, I'm gonna actually show how to convert the script into visual scripting. You can use the technique that I'm gonna show in this video on any other C Sharp script that you're trying to convert. So I'm gonna use this testing project that I have. And the first thing that we need to do is create this mono behavior or this class. And in visual scripting, it's equivalent to creating a script graph. So we can actually call it better jump and we can go edit graph. Now we'll go inside the class and the first two things that we have here are two variables a fall multiplier and a low jump multiplier. Now, if you see public or serialized field in the beginning of the variable, that will be equivalent of creating an object variable in visual scripting. And currently the object variables are actually grayed out. The reason why the object variable is grayed out is in visual scripting, you can only add object variables when you have an object selected that is using this script. So let's go ahead and create an object with this script. So I'm just gonna use this cube that I have here. And at the bottom, let's do add. And we'll add a script machine. And for the graph, we can pass the graph that we just created as the graph that we're gonna be using. If we look at the script graph again, the object variable is here. And you can see that I do have that cube selected. If I try to open the script again using this file, you can see it disappears. But as soon as I select one of the objects that has the script in the scene, it actually appears. So I'm gonna add those variables, type float, and let's use the same default value of 2.5. Float and two for this one. And that's the two variables that we see right here. Now, if you ever see private in front of the variables or there isn't anything in front of it, that will be equivalent of creating a graph variable in visual scripting because that value is gonna be only used inside the graph. Now, the object variable allows you to change the value based on the object in your game. So if you have multiple objects using the same script, they can have different values for these options. And that we can see by going on cube. Right here, we have the variables and you can see both of the variables. Now, there is a downside of using an object variable than a graph variable. And that is if you add the script to another game object, so let's use this quad, the object variables need to be added again. They're not automatically added for you. But an easy way of adding those variables is going to an object that already has those variables, then just copying the component, going to the new object and pasting the component values that will add those variables for you. But that's something to keep in mind when deciding if you want to use an object variable or a graph variable. So that pretty much covers the variables of all the classes. And the next one, we have a rigid body to DRB. So this is actually a private variable. And you can add that as a graph variable here if you want. But in Visual Scripting, creating a variable for a rigid body is not necessary because it will automatically pull the rigid body of this object whenever we try to do something with the rigid body. So, and that is what this awake method does here. It's trying to get a component from this game object of type rigid body 2 d and set it to that variable. And I already said that this part is automatically done in visual scripting. So whenever you do something with rigid body, if the game object has that rigid body, it will do this process for you. So that simplifies the conversion a little bit. And this process is not only done for rigid body, it's done for any component in your game object. 
And if we go down, the last part of the script is this update function. So for update, we'll need to add on update event. That's equivalent of the update. And the first thing that we see is an if statement. So in visual scripting, we also have an if statement. And the input for the if statement is a Boolean. And right here in parentheses, we can see what condition this if statement is checking for. So it's looking for the rigid body velocity, the y axis to be less than zero. So let's look for a rigid body. And it was using 2D in this script. And we're looking for velocity. So get velocity. And you can see that it automatically connected the rigid body from this object to be used. And now we can get the y axis of this velocity. Now you can see after I did that, this node turned yellow. And you can read what's the reason behind that. The target is missing a rigid body to decompone it. To solve this issue, we need to add a rigid body to this game object, which you can do later. So we got the y axis. And now we need to check if it's less. So let's look up less. And the second value default is zero, which is what we're looking for. And that gives us a Boolean. We can connect it to our if statement. And that completes the if statement that we have here at the top. So now let's continue inside of this if statement. And in here, we're modifying the rigid body velocity. Now, just a quick side note, I didn't write this C sharp script, but whenever you're modifying a rigid body velocity, it's recommended to use fixed update instead of update, but I'll just do it like it is written here. What we're trying to do here is rigid body velocity plus equals. The plus equals is equivalent to rigid body velocity equals rigid body velocity plus and the rest of it. So it's actually incrementing the rigid body velocity. This is just a short way of writing it in C sharp. If it is true, then we want to get our rigid body 2D set velocity. And now we need to calculate the new velocity that we want to set. So let's start by getting the current rigid body velocity. And now we're trying to add all of this to it. Let's do add and we're going to use a vector two because that's what we're working with here. And the output of this is going to be our new velocity. Now let's create this equation that we have here. So first we need to get vector two up. Then we need to multiply it by a generic. And the value that we're multiplying it by is physics to D and get gravity. But we're only interested in getting the y axis. And that's what we're going to be multiplying that by. Now we want to multiply that result again. So let's do another multiply. Generic. And here we're multiplying the fall multiplier minus one. So let's use a subtract scalar and we're subtracting one. So we're going to leave the B value as is. But for a value, we can go to our object and get the fall multiplier here. Connect that as a. So that gets us to this point right here. And now we are multiplying it by time delta time. So you can actually add another multiply, find uh, the time delta time and multiply it like that. But in visual scripting, there is a shorter way of doing it. And it is by using the per second unit. Since we're working with vector two, we want to use the per second vector two here. And that will basically multiply our result by time delta time. And that we can pass as the B value for what we're trying to add to the current velocity. That was this line. Let me actually kind of move it aside so it'd be clear to see. So we went inside the if statement. If it was true, we did all of this multiplication. And now we need to go to the next line. Now, if you just saw else here and not another if statement, then you could have done the second calculation right here. But since it's an else if, you still go off the false, but you need to add another if statement to it. And the condition that we're checking here is this right here. So making sure that the rigid velocity is greater than zero and 
the input get button jump is not pressed. So I'm going to duplicate this portion right here because that's the same value that we're trying to check for. But this time we're checking if it's greater than zero and we need to match another condition in this end. So we're looking for an end here. And now let's connect the second condition. So input get button. And the button name is jump. Now, since we have an exclamation mark before the input, that means we need to get the opposite value of this. That's called negate. So there is that unit that we need to use. And we can pass that as the second condition. After that, we can pass it inside here. And now we can go inside of this else if statement and we're going to be branching out from the true for that. So it looks like this calculation is almost exactly the same, except the variable just changed. So let's duplicate the whole script that we had here. Connect that and the place where we have the variable, we can switch to use the other variable instead. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Be sure you click on that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to support my channel, there is a Patreon link in the description. Thank you all for being here. See you in the next one.